الله بالخير أكثر من 150 ألف طفل اقتلعوا من عائلاتهم قسرا ووضعوا في مدرسة داخلية بعيدة حيث قضى الآلاف منهم في ظروف غامضة حقيقة شائنة وواقع أليم في كندا التي أبادت سكانها الأصليين جماعيا في التقرير الختامي للبعثة الأممية التي زارت كندا في أذار مارس المنصرم يكشف المقرر الخاص للأمم المتحدة المعني بحقوق الشعوب الأصلية هوزي فرانسيسكو كاليتساي أن الحكومة الكندية تعتزم إتلاف السجلات المتعلقة بهذه الانتهاكات بحلول عام 2027 كيف اختفى الآلاف من أطفال السكان الأصليين في كندا؟ وهل كانت المدارس الداخلية أداة لتنفيذ مخطط إبادة جماعية؟ ما المفعولات القانونية لاعتراف كندا الرسمي بالإبادة الجماعية للسكان الأصليين؟ وما علاقة برنامج الاستخبارات الأمريكية MK Ultra بالقبور المتكشفة حديثا؟ هل محميات السكان الأصليين معسكرات اعتقال في كندا؟ وكيف يتضامن السكان الأصليون في البلاد مع الشعب الفلسطيني؟ نرحب بكم ونرى ونسمع أكثر من وحديو العضو في حركة أمهات الموهوك السكان الأصليين في مونتريال في البعد الأقرب هذه الميادين وأنا زينب صفار خليكم ويانا وحديو member of the Mohawk mothers in Canada Mohawk mother speaker in Canadian courts وحديو سلام and welcome to الميادين this is the proximate aspect I'm زينب صفار Good pleasure to have you, ma'am. No, oh, it's a pleasure to be talking with you. Always a pleasure. Well, um, you are a Mohawk mother from Kahnawake, which is a First Nations uh, territory of the Mohawks near Montreal. Uh, you belong to um, the indigenous people. Might you tell us how long have your ancestors lived in Canada? Let's have a historical perspective, if I may. Our people have lived here since time immemorial. This is the land, this is the land that we came from, that we derived from, that we were born of, from nature. Let's try to understand now, how did Canada colonize the indigenous uh, people? Who was responsible for colonialism in Canada? Um, well, settlers from Europe, they came here. Uh, this was Europeans, French, English, and uh, and such. Uh, Dutch came here. Um, that's how we got the name Mohawk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and when they came here, they, they saw a land that was plentiful and that was beautiful. And it, we didn't need any laws. We didn't need any type of governmental structure we have our own way that we conduct ourselves that is called mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that is a, a a way a philosophy that we conduct ourselves with nature mm -hmm. and we are a mere piece of nature that has our place in the cycle of all life. Let's try, uh, Gwadia, to hit the heart of matter 
today. Reports indicate that over 150,000 indigenous children were snatched from their homes, from their mothers between 1883 and 1997, often forcibly and placed in distant uh, government funded uh, residential or boarding schools. What was the goal of Canada's Indian residential school system, as they may call it? Were those schools founded to dissolve and carry out a genocide against the indigenous people, please? Yes, they were. The, the idea is in order for Canada to become a country, they need a land base and they do not own this land that they reside upon. So in this act where they created the residential schools, they have tried to take uh, our people and either kill them directly off or to uh, assimilate them into a white or French society mm -hmm. that they have. And in all actuality, um, I believe that that number of 150,000 is, um, is, is very um, slim. In, in our eyes, that is just a fraction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, yeah. but, but when they try to assimilate you, Guedio, assimilate you as what? You get to assimilated as what in the society? I mean, do those French, English and Dutch look at you equally at this moment um there are a lot of people who are allies and understand i cannot put all english all french all settlers in the same box there are many settlers that tell us introduce themselves as a settler mm -hmm. they understand that who they are and where they came from but in all actuality this we feel still heavily mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, discriminated upon. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of racism where we live all across Canada because I've lived all, all, I've, I've lived on the other side of the country and it exists everywhere still. There is still that mentality put into uh, people's minds through their families as well, not just governmental, where they they came out and they, they literally think we're like dirty people. <laughs> mm -hmm. But tell us more here. Let's focus on the residential schools. Do you believe that yeah. a, a kind of genocide occurred against the indigenous people? Yes. Well, they've taken our babies from homes. They've taken young, young children, uh, teenagers, whatever they can. And we were put under duress because mm -hmm. if a parent tried to stop that, that process from happening, they would be jailed. So it was either keep the rest of your family and be able to be there and take care or uh, have to hand over your child. Literally, your child, you're being ripped from your child and put into these schools. But once this goes further, once they are in that school, they were meant to disappear. So we see that the government's plan was intertwined with the church and intertwined with all the government agencies like hospitals, sanatoriums, uh, psychiatric wards, uh, military hospitals. There was this big network for them to get lost in. Mm -hmm. So if they were mistreated and died at a residential school and just buried on the spot with no, uh, no telling their parents, no burial spot, site marking, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's so very tormenting, of course. This is a, a very ugly reality, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes, but, but the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada concluded that the residential school system was an attempted quote unquote cultural genocide but the escalating number of the recovered unmarked graves points to something even darker and grimmer what is yeah. the current official number of students you said that it was just a fraction known to have died in the 139 federally run residential schools it's in the thousands it's in the thousands and uh, 
it's not just a cultural genocide. It was straight up genocide. And that was admitted only after the Pope came to give his apology. And our stance on that is we don't want an apology. We want something done about it. That's the exactly. only way. That's the only way this is going to work when mm -hmm. somebody takes on the responsibility of what was done and somebody does something about it and changes the trajectory of what what it created because the children that were in those residential schools were not just the victims it was the parents it was the families it was the the communities that they came from became damaged of course many many torturous ways done to them many things that they've seen that now they carry that into their adult life. And how do you create a family? When you have can... all this burden of mental, physical and sexual abuse. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I will come to this particular point, Gwedir, but allow me to ask you here, as per our document, the uh, culminating report upon the visit of the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the rights of indigenous peoples, Mr. Jose Francisco Kalitsai, to Canada, of course, investigations into unmarked graves and efforts to collect archival information have revealed numerous accounts of indigenous children who entered residential schools, hospitals, as you said, and mental health facilities and went missing, often with no information provided to their families, as you have just told us children were subjected to physical mental and sexual abuse tell us more ma'am what have the investigations exposed so far well the the investigations have exposed people and um uh entities that we can actually pinpoint and have the the ability to find people uh, but we are being bomb uh, not bombarded we are being um blocked mm -hmm. because of um, access to information and we are also being blocked by the time constraints that it takes to um apply for access to information as well certain things are redacted like there is a plethora of things put in our way to stop us from gaining this information that is there is something that all of the laws are 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 deeply deeply prejudicial they're deeply deeply um um mm -mm. anti-indigenous right in their yes, yes and in their act it, it, it says that everything that is in under the ground archaeologically belongs to quebec it needs to be said that the ways of their court system and the ways of their laws and their proclamations and such have allowed residential schools so we should not be following that same set of rules yes but but prime mm -hmm. minister yes uh, prime minister justin trudeau says uh, his government accepts that the murders and disappearances of indigenous women and girls across Canada in recent decades amount to an act of genocide. Did Trudeau's statement hold the butchers, the killers accountable? And how to compensate for the Canadian indigenous people who are still alive? What about the legal action and implications in this sense? Well, you know, the, I find that the government goes under the, 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 the precedent that money will solve everything. As usual. That's all they're about. They're not about human beings. Mm -hmm. They're about trying to keep their power in place. A price, a price tag for everything, where do you? Yes. So they have, um, okay, we're going to put out a settlement and, and indigenous people have to go and fill out a form and tell what their story is to like, that's so traumatizing, but you have to fill it out and send it back to the government and they'll give you money. But by signing that, you're saying that you accepted their apology when there's so much more to be. This land needs to be handed back to in the possession and they need to relinquish 
their titles or whatever it is they call it. And you need to stop the snatching of children from their own uh, uh, mothers. In his book, uh, Poisoner in Chief, author Stephen Kinzer divulged that Sidney Gottlieb, the CIA's head of the MK Ultra mind control project, of course, had directed brutal experiments at secret prisons on three continents. Newly revealed evidence, of course, Guadio exposes previously hidden links between MK Ultra experiments on indigenous children in Canada and imprisoned black people in the U.S. of A. The Mohawk mothers are investigating, of course, the deaths of indigenous children in CIA-sponsored psychiatric experiments in uh, between the 1950s and the 1960s. Uh, while we may never know the full truth, uh, we owe it to those harmed and killed to illuminate their stories. What have you discovered and divulged so far in your search? So far, we have um, uh, we we actually have a live person. Uh, her name is Lana Ponting, mm -hmm. and she is uh, actually a survivor. And she has gone through the same system because uh, they deemed her unruly, and that's what they would do to our children: give them IQ tests and send them. And the ones that were really intelligent, they'd want to take them away from us and get rid of them if they couldn't mind control them and mm -hmm. ask and have them work for the government but in this mk ultra we have we have understood the the links between all the government agencies mm -hmm. with with uh residential schools it was a big uh it, it it goes to show that it was a big uh business what kind of business, Guadio? What do they do? Did you have the idea, the clear idea of what they were doing? What kind of experiments? They were doing mind control experiments, uh, um, trying to erase people's minds mm -hmm. and see if they can reprogram someone. So people were sent there. Uh, a, a mother that was uh, just had a baby and had maybe um, postpartum depression and she would go there. But when she would come home, she'd have wouldn't know any of her family or her babies or mm -hmm. that. So, and at, in, in this woman's visit there, Lana Ponting, wiping out the memory, wiping out the memory of them and seeing uh, dismembering uh, the family members from each other. Yes, yes, definitely. And seeing if they can try to reprogram a person mm -hmm. doing all this because they were they were worried about during the wars, the prisoners taken that they were going to divulge secrets in their, you mm -hmm. know, CIA as information, uh, if you want to say spies and such, and all these people that work within governmental agencies and have this information in their mind if they were to be caught would they divulge all their information so this is what they were trying to do when someone would come home they're trying to find out a way that they can take that information from them and uh do it with without harm but they were willing to, they were willing to use indigenous children in that spot because they deemed us as disposable you have achieved, excuse me, a, a milestone in your ongoing lawsuit against several entities, as you have mentioned, the McGill University in Montreal, the Canadian government and the Royal Victoria Hospital in Quebec. Uh, yet, the Supreme Court of Canada has ruled that records pertaining to abuses are confidential and should be destroyed in 2027. Why? Wow. That's appalling. It is appalling and it is unfortunate that already records have already been destroyed mm -hmm. from all different levels, from the university to the to the province, to the to the country. But what we are there to do is to make sure that those things come to us and they're protected under us if they want to get rid of it. Well, why not? Why can't we have it? We need to have it because those are our people. Mm -hmm. that's what I'm responsible for and there's nothing stronger than the law of nature and that's where I come from exactly it's not, not man-made it's mm -hmm. not man-made and this needs what, what we are going to do is we are going to get every piece of information we're
we're going to do. And we're also going to use our own ways. We did it ourselves. We did not use a lawyer. We only used who we are and what our powers are as human beings to go into that court and tell them that our way is the original way of this land. And they are to, they are to hear us because even in their laws, it says that our ways is the first and the most supreme of the land. Mm -hmm. Are the ab original uh, uh, territories in uh, Canada to be considered as concentration camps? Okay. This Tell is us how, how you live today in your territory. Okay. Right now, we're free to come and go as we please. But there's a constant monitor. There's a monitor, there's a band council in the middle of our territory that is trying to create this illusion that they have this power over us. There is a lot of us that understand that that is not a power that is over us, but they do have some of the minds and they do have that um, silence happening from people that work for them. And with the pretense that they're giving, they're doing government programs and they are... Um, this, uh, this is a kind of assimilation. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, allow me to ask you to bring you to our part of the world, our same suffering here, actually, from Canada to Palestine. The indigenous uh, people's struggle is one. The injustices and humanities of uh, inhumanities, actually, of colonialists and occupiers are the same. How do the First Nations, the indigenous peoples of Canada, stand in solidarity with the Palestinian uh, people struggles for their land and liberation. Wow. It, it, in my eyes, it is the exact same thing that is happening. And that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's how I understand. That's how I see human beings. I see it. I don't, uh, let, let me make this clear to you that who we are as mm -hmm. and we belong to the land. We don't own the land. We belong to the land, therefore we must take care of it, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how I see myself. And we do not need to be a group to hold our rights to, to what we do. I don't need to have a group of people. If the whole town decides that they want to be on the government side of genocide, like, like in other parts of the world that that is happening, they're trying to like starve people out and, and put them in jail or kill them. Uh, if the whole community decided and I didn't, I still hold my inherent right on to this land. And in Palestine, I see the same notion where they're trying to do the respectful, rightful thing and they're being put under duress and they're being genocided. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I, can't, I can't live with that. So on right. this side, um, um, one of one of the people that I, I work with, Gohandinetta, at one point had had gone to McGill University and seized McGill University because they were trying to do some uh, some some create some weaponry against Palestine, and she stopped it. Right. Because bless yeah, you. She, yes. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that's. No matter anywhere in this world, we should versus... all act in symbiosis. Uh, the, there should be a kind of synergy when it comes to such kind of uh, genuine causes of the people who actually belong to the land. It's a matter of yes. belonging and not uh, having this kind of land by any sort of power. Well, uh, Gwedir of the Mohawk Mothers, thank you very much for your astounding and interesting explanation of this tormenting uh, reality. Bless you and such a pleasure to have you, ma'am. Thank you. في عام 2022 أصدر البابا فرانسيس اعتذارا تاريخيا من تعاون الكنيسة الكاثوليكية مع سياسة الاستيعاب الكندية الكارثية للمدارس الداخلية التي فرضت على أولاد السكان الأصليين حيث تعرض الآلاف منهم للاعتداء الجسدي والجنسي وفي كثير من الحالات لاقوا حتفهم هي إبادة ثقافية وتصفية جسدية شاملة 
تجدر الإشارة إلى أن الرهبانيات الكاثوليكية قامت بتشغيل 66 مدرسة من أصل 139 مدرسة داخلية في البلاد وقد دخلت الكنيسة رسميا عما يسمى النظرية القانونية والسياسية التي يبلغ عمرها 550 عاما والتي سوغت استيلاء المستعمرين على أرض السكان الأصليين لكن هل يمثل رفض الفاتيكان الرسمي لمفهومات الحقبة الاستعمارية التي شرعت الاستيلاء على أراضي السكان الأصليين خطوة رمزية إلى الأمام؟ وما يعني ذلك؟ يعني كيف بتتقرش؟ هل سيكون تأثيره في السياسة الحديثة هو المقياس الحقيقي للتغيير؟ وماذا عن أهل الأرض وأصحابها؟ المجبولين بترابها والمتجذرين بسمرة شمسها كيف ينعكس قرار كهذا قطعا جاء متأخرا جدا هل سيعيد الحق والكرامة إلى أهلهما ويحررهم من كل الميادين سلاما وتحية في مالا